Hi, hi. This is my this is this is my doll Jesse. Good girl. That was very good. Do you want Daddy to keep doing his video and you can be in it? Yeah. If we want our children to have financial success in life, then we can't just rely on the school system to teach them what they need to know. We need to stand up as parents and learn how we can teach our children about investing in property and how we can teach them about financial literacy. I may look too young to have children, I am only 25, but I have two children, a daughter who is three and a half and a son who is two years old. And if there's anything I'm passionate about, I'm passionate about them, I'm passionate about their well-being, and I'm passionate about their future success. And I believe a strong part of helping them achieve future success, it's teaching them about investing in property and teaching them about understanding finances better and how to manage their own finances better as well. Hi, I'm Ryan McLean. I'm from PositiveCashflowAustralia.com.au, where we teach people like you how to find and invest in positive cash flow property. So how can we start to teach our children about investing in property and achieving financial success? Well, I've got seven, seven ideas for you. And what I've done is I have gone to the forum propertyinvesting.com. I've asked this question there and I have taken some of the answers that people have given. Also some of my own um, advice and as well some research that I have done on this topic. So here are some seven tips that I can give you about how you can teach your kids about property investing. It's important to know that I started getting interested in property when I was probably about 13, 14. And I really got interested in property when I was 16 after I read Steve McKnight's book, Zero to 130 Properties in 3.5 Years. So as a child, I was very interested in learning about property and I learned about property from a very young age. So it definitely can be done. So tip number one is to teach delayed gratification. <laughs> In our society, we do not have delayed gratification. And with the onset of the internet and the fact that we can access any entertainment anytime we want on YouTube or through social media, delayed gratification is not a skill that many of us have. But it is something that we can learn and it is something that we can teach our children. How you go about teaching delayed gratification is up to you. Just like we teach our children that they need to eat their dinner before they have their dessert, that is a form of delayed gratification. We could also teach them by saying, well, you want to have this toy, right? Would you prefer to have this toy now and that's it? Or you can have this toy in one month time and I'll also give you some extra money to buy something else. So by making them wait for the things that they want, we can actually teach them delayed gratification and teach them this important lesson. That's something that I'm doing now with my children because they are very young and so I need to teach them about delayed gratification and I need to teach them that they can't just have everything they want now. A lot of people on the forum talked about being careful about giving too much to your children or not giving enough and it seems that there's a fine line between I guess babying your children and giving them everything they need so they don't have to go out and hunt it and not giving them anything and then leaving them dry. Tip number two is to play educational games. Two educational games are great that I can think of and I'm sure there's probably more out there but you've got your standard which is Monopoly which teaches them about banks, teaches them about managing finances and buying property and you've also got a game called Cash Flow for Kids which is created by Robert Kiyosaki who wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad and this goes into more detail and teaches them about cash flow, teaches them about financial statements and so forth. You can then move them up to cash flow for adults, it's just called cash flow and there's also cash flow 202 I think it's called which goes into more details about share trading and stuff like that. But one of our jobs as a parent because our children can now access information whenever they want, they have the internet, we didn't have the internet as children, we had to go to books, we had to go through teachers or through our parents to find information. But now our children can get information whenever they want. So we need to motivate them to want to get that information. And I believe games and educational games are a great and a fun way to do that and are a great way to make learning fun. Tip number three is to teach them financial literacy. By this, I mean teaching them more about finances than just go and get a job. 
teaching them about what Robert Kiyosaki calls the cash flow quadrant, which is the different ways that people make money. People make money as employees, as self-employed, they make them in business, or they make them as investors. So teaching our children about the different ways that people make money, I believe is very important. Also teaching them the difference about working for money and having passive income is important as well. And we should be training our children's minds how to look for passive income and how to create that in their lives if we want them to achieve financial freedom. Tip number four is to get them to manage their own finances and to do financial reports. So this is something that I never did as a kid and this is something that I wish I had to do, but it's to get them to actually manage their own finances and actually create reports around their own finances. When I moved from full-time work into running my own business in October of 2013, I found the cash flow analysis and doing your profit and losses and all of those different financial analyses very difficult. And so if I can teach my children how to do anything, I'm going to teach them how to manage their finances and how to report on it as well. So if they get income coming in, whether it be from a job or through uh, pocket money that we give them, get them to report on that, get them to report on how they spend it so they be, can, can begin to understand how cash flows in and how cash flows out and then they can then take more control over that. Tip number five is to do property investing together as a family. I remember when my parents bought their first investment property, they took us along to the open houses and they would always ask us what we thought of the houses as well. And this really got me interested in property. I wish they had gone into more detail, which I'll talk about in the next point, but doing things together as a family is a sure way to make your child enjoy something because you're having quality family time, but it's quality family time around investing in property. So that could mean going to open houses, it could mean going to seminars about property investing, could mean speaking to real estate agents, but by getting everyone involved in it together and by doing it as an activity together, we can teach them just by having default family time. Tip number six is to show them the figures and ask for their opinion. This is something that my parents did a little bit, but I kind of wish they did it in more detail. And that was to actually go through the figures with me and to say, look, here's the property that we're thinking about buying. Here's how much it costs. Here's how much deposit we have. Here's how much it's going to rent for. And here's how the finances is going to work out. And then ask their opinion. What do you think of the property? How do you think um, it makes money? How do you think we can make more money from it? Do you think it's going to be a good investment? And by getting them involved on the smaller details and the financial details, they will begin to understand through experience more about investing in property. I believe a lot of people don't go ahead and invest in property because when you're buying your first property, there are so many things you need to know. You need to know about financing. You need to save your deposit. You need to know how to talk to real estate agents. You need to know how to search for property on the internet. You need to know how to deal with solicitors. Uh, you need to know about contracts. There's so many different things that you need to know. And so if we can give our children experience in those different steps, even though they're not doing it themselves, they're doing it with us and it's actually our investment, they will learn from experience. So then when it comes to buying their first property, they've got all this experience under their belt, even though they haven't bought any property themselves and their confidence will be so much higher than someone who is overwhelmed by the amount of things they need to know about. And tip number seven is to encourage them to find ways to earn passive income. So property is not the only way to achieve financial success and it's not the only way to generate passive income. So if we encourage our children to look for other ways in their life that they can generate passive income, then we're going to teach them to be more astute investors and we're going to teach them to look for opportunities in the marketplace. So rather than just training our children to go out and find a good secure job and then invest any money left over, if we can teach them about creating passive income, well then they can go out and create passive income from themselves. It's so easy to do these days with the internet and you know, kids are starting their own websites and their own businesses. It might interest you to know that Snapchat, which you may have heard of as a new social media thing, it just turned down a $3 billion offer from Facebook. And the guy who started, started Snapchat 
is 23 years old. Imagine being 23 and turning down a $3 billion business offer. It's insane. I can't think about it. I'm 25 and I'm nowhere near $3 billion, but this guy is. So we can teach our children about passive income, teach them about business opportunities. Who knows? And when they're 23, they might be turning down billion dollar offers as well. So there you have some tips about how to teach kids about investing in property. This is a topic that I haven't touched on before, but you can be sure that this is a topic that I will touch on more and more in future because I love teaching and I love my kids to death and I want all of our children to have a great chance of achieving financial success. If you want more videos, articles or podcasts just like this one, then head over to positivecashflowaustralia.com.au or get your kids to head over to positivecashflowaustralia.com.au. They don't like reading, we've got YouTube videos for them. If they don't like YouTube videos, you could listen to podcasts in the car and your kids could learn about investing in property while you're driving them to school. You've got the radio, you've got control, so you decide what to do. So until tomorrow when the next episode comes out, stay positive.